from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 77. Our last episode was entitled Animal Lovers, and that's where we explored the home of a rich diversity of wildlife in Alabama's Mobile Bay Delta. We also took a close look at beavers and their ability to change the environment in which they live. We also featured more advice on completing the research and reporting of an animal of your choice. Now, if you're still working on that project, be sure to visit letscreate.org and navigate to the episode 75 page. I have a chart posted there that will help you find the episodes that relate to the various report topics, including the connecting words that will help you convey the facts in a way that advances your level of English. Now, all this focus on animals may seem puzzling for a program about advancing English proficiency. I'll share a bit about that whole approach we call content-based ESL in the next episode. But first, I want to share some of the experiences I've had with animals. I took a picture of this chipmunk at the highest point on Mount Ashland. These little animals seldom stay still for long, but this one took its time rearing its hind legs up and looking around. Although diminutive in size, this little fellow seemed to be laying claim to the whole world below. Now this family of deer were as surprised to see me as I was to see them. I had entered this aspen grove with my camera ready to capture whatever I encountered and while I don't like the thought of surprising wild animals, I do like the look of surprise they all have. Now, I was farther from the aspen grove when spotting these animals in the distance. The animals are hard to identify, so this picture is great for sparking conversation in a group. Each member can use the best of their English to say which animal these are and why they're so sure about the animal's identity. Now, when I took this picture, I was more interested in capturing the fall colors in Rocky Mountain National Park than in animals. Not until I took the picture did I notice. The elk, just a few feet from my hiking boots. Look at the bottom of the image. You'll see the fur on the elk's back. I was on a lonely highway in Wyoming early one morning when this coyote crossed in front of me. There was enough space for me to pull over and take the picture through the open window of my pickup as this coyote looked back at me. The coyote didn't stay still for long. From the same highway in Wyoming, I spotted pronghorns. Now they all scattered when I got out to shoot the photo and I was able to frame this one though as it ran away. Another favorite is this scene in Nevada. A storm is visible in the distance and a man in the foreground is leading these horses. Now, one of the things I love about traveling in Nevada is the sweeping scenes like this one and the very light traffic on some highways that allows the driver to look out at the landscape and stop for shots like these. I have to credit my wife, Liz, for taking this picture. Now, for a split second in time, I got to imagine that I visited the famous Wolf OR7 also known as Journey. Well, I actually did no such thing. The wolf you see is a well-made model, and I'm not even outside. This is a place called 
the Bear Hotel in Grants Pass. Evergreen Banks uh, constructed a display for outdoor Oregon beauty, which people can visit during the coldest days of September, excuse me, of December, even colder. Now, I'm content to leave OR7 and his family alone, to tell you the truth, to thrive in the mountains of southern Oregon without human contact. So these are just some ways I've enjoyed animals, you know, animal life around me. And just as I've shared my experiences with these pictures, you can share stories with pictures in an English conversation group. That's what I recommend. You don't have to even use your own pictures. You can get pictures of animals from many sources, and I got these from National Geographic magazine. As a teacher, I laminated them so they'll last a long time. Now, you may see some glare as we share these, but here's a picture of a beehive, a large colony of honeybees. It's likely that someone in your conversation group has seen honeybees. The boxy hive can be a source of questions or shared experiences. Maybe some members are afraid of bees or even allergic. Lots of conversation can come from this picture. Now, this picture may evoke some emotions in some members of your group. Communicating emotions is an important language function, and sometimes they make people feel a need, more of a need, to participate. Now, this picture is just plain strange. Your group members may come up with more questions than answers. Honeypot ants are among the wonders of nature. Now, much less exotic or fearful is this picture of a turtle. It provides an opportunity to talk about body shape, colors, and body parts. It's also an opportunity to talk about different kinds of turtles and how they resemble and how they differ from each other. That's the function of comparing and contrasting. Now, this woman is covered with monarch butterflies. In recent years, there's been uh, lots in the news about butterflies, and especially about monarchs. These butterflies have an amazing migration cycle, and it's a bit of a mystery how the offspring of monarchs that move south during the winter know how to return to the place of their parents' origin without the help of those parents. Now, in this picture, we're focused on only one monarch butterfly. Uh, there's still a lot to talk about, including the body parts, color, and life cycle. More advanced groups can discuss the threats to monarch populations and what can be done to support these amazing insects. Now, for group members who like to fish, this is a picture that shows a number of different uh, species of fish. Their bodies, colors, and even their names can be good conversation starters. Perhaps some group members can share experiences of fishing or restoring habitat for fish. Some may express a preference for some of the fish in terms of a meal. So if you know other people who are working to improve their English, getting together with them for a conversation is a great way to ramp up your English. Don't worry so much about having a native speaker or someone more advanced to lead the groups. Chances are, Various group members will have more knowledge and skills in different areas of the language, so the opportunity is there to improve your spoken English by learning from each other. Now, if you have trouble organizing your own group, many public libraries and city recreation departments offer conversation groups. Some churches, civic organizations, community colleges, and even universities offer conversation groups as part of their community outreach. Ask around in your community or visit websites of the entities listed above. Now, some of the more organized groups may have a more advanced or native English leader, but don't hesitate to be in a group that doesn't. The important thing is to get the language on your tongue. And with that, we end segment one of episode 77.